Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. As you can tell if you are watching this on YouTube from the cute cartoon llama robot on your screen, today we are talking about Meta's formal announcement of Code Llama, which is their dedicated LLM built on top of Llama 2 but fine tuned for coding purposes. What we're going to talk about today is one, Code Llama itself, how it's released, how it was trained, the variations thereof, and community response. And we're also going to situate it in the larger context of the competition around coding dedicated LLMs. Now, this is an extremely important area of competition. In his tweet discussing the announcement of Code Llama, Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA said, Coding is by far the most important LLM task. It's the cornerstone of strong reasoning engines and powerful AI agents. Now, we first got news that Meta was likely to release a code-dedicated model last week when the story was broken by the information. The story they wrote was called Meta's Next AI Attack on OpenAI, Free Code Generating Software. The angle that the information pursued in that story was that by offering an open model dedicated to code generation, it could, as they put it, siphon customers from paid coding assistance such as Microsoft's GitHub Copilot, which is powered by OpenAI. Well, yesterday, Meta officially announced Code Llama, an AI tool for coding. Here are the most important details. First of all, as I mentioned before, Code Llama is what they call a code specialized version of Llama 2. It was created by further training Llama 2 on code specific data sets, sampling more data from that same data set for longer. Meta says that Code Llama can generate code and natural language about code from both code prompts as well as natural language prompts. It can also be used for code completion as well as debugging. As part of the release, Meta released three sizes of Code Llama with 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion parameters. And they say that each of the models was trained with 500 billion tokens of code and code related data. Code Llama supports languages including Python, C, Java, PHP, TypeScript, C, Sharp, Bash, and others. Now, the reason they're releasing multiple models is that they're good for different uses. Meta writes The three models address different serving and latency requirements. The 7 billion model, for example, can be served on a single GPU. The 34 billion model returns the best results and allows for better coding assistance, but the smaller 7B and 13B models are faster and more suitable for tasks that require low latency like real-time code completion. Now, in addition to those three base models, they also released two different variants, one called Code Llama Python and one called Code Llama Instruct. Python is, as you would imagine, a language specialized variant that they say was further fine-tuned on 100 billion tokens of Python code. They believe that a special model was relevant given how important Python is for the AI community and because it's the most benchmarked language for code generation. Now, Code Llama Instruct is a variant that's been specifically fine-tuned for natural language. So if one is prompting Code Llama in natural language, using Code Llama Instruct might yield better results than one of the standard base models. Finally, Meta is releasing these models under the same license as Llama 2. So what are people talking about in relation to this release? Well, one issue, although it's much more for media than it is in the discussion on Twitter, is summed up here by TechCrunch. They write, Then there's the intellectual property elephant in the room. Some code generation models, not necessarily Code Llama, although Meta won't categorically deny it, are trained on copyrighted or code under a restrictive license, and these models can regurgitate this code when prompted in a certain way. Legal experts have argued that these tools could put companies at risk if they were to unwittingly incorporate copyrighted suggestions from the tool into their production software. A second issue, once again identified by media, is the ability to use Code Llama for malicious purposes. TechCrunch says that Meta red teamed Code Llama with only internally with 25 employees, and that they were able to prompt some concerning behavior. TechCrunch writes, Code Llama won't write ransomware code when asked directly. However, when the request is phrased more benignly, for example, create a script to encrypt all files in a user's home directory, which is effectively a ransomware script, the model complies. Still, I would say that the vast majority of people are talking about one of two things. The first is the performance. Going back to Dr. Jim Fan, he writes, Llama 2 was almost at GPT 3.5 level except for coding, which was a real bummer. Now, Code Llama finally bridges the gap to GPT 3.5. Today, he says, is another major milestone in open source software foundation models. Others were similarly excited to see an open-ish model beating closed models like GPT 3.5 on certain eval tests. Yassin tweets, I cannot believe Zuck et al. just beat GPT 3.5 at human eval pass at 1 and is approaching GPT 4 with only 34 billion params. Still, easily the most discussed aspect was something that was slightly buried in the white paper, which was that their highest performing model wasn't one that they released. What Llama called their unnatural code Llama, which was a model trained on synthetic data, actually performed best. For example, the human eval pass at 1 test 
GPT 3.5 scores a 48.1%, Code Llama Python 34B scores a 53.7%, and the unnatural Code Llama scored a 62.2%. Professor Ethan Mollick writes, Will AIs start to fail when they start training on AI-generated data? There has been a lot of speculation. Now we have some hints that it may not be an issue. The new open-source Code Llama performs better when given AI-generated examples to train on. Gary Basin tweets, They don't want you to know that synthetic data is the future. LLMs generating synthetic data to train on drives a huge boost in unnatural Code Llama, the one model they aren't releasing. Surpasses GPT 3.5 and gets close to GPT 4 performance on a 34B model. Now, there's a lot of speculation so far on why this might be. That is, at this point, just that, speculation. But it's certainly something really important to watch, given just how much discussion there has been about how models will likely implode on themselves if they start to be trained on a higher and higher percentage of synthetic or AI-created data. Now, as we wrap up, let's just do a quick summary of where the state of coding LLMs is. And let's first talk on the open source or open source-ish side of things. There is, of course, now Code Llama, as we just discussed. But then a couple weeks ago, we also got Stability AI releasing Stable Code. One of the big benefits that Stable Code promised was a longer context window of 16,000 tokens. In May, Hugging Face announced Star Coder, which was trained on more than 80 programming languages and also fine tuned for Python. And then, of course, on the commercial side, there is Amazon's Code Whisperer, Microsoft's GitHub Copilot, which is based on OpenAI's technology. And yes, a forthcoming but as yet unreleased tool from Google called AlphaCode. Now, the takeaway from this, I think, is less about which of these is the best right now, although it appears that Code Llama has some good standing to argue that it is, if not better, catching up rapidly, but more just to understand how intense this competition area really is. I think Jim is right when he says coding is by far the most important LLM task, at least right now. Indeed, we've seen with ChatGPT's code interpreter how much the ability to create code to answer certain problems changes the performance of an LLM. It's why some people have called ChatGPT with Code Interpreter a sneaky version of GPT 4.5, even though it's not named that. Anyways, this is one of the most dynamic and exciting areas of the AI space to watch. And with Meta's Code Interpreter on the scene, the competition has done nothing but heat up. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor, go check out the AI Breakdown newsletter. You can go to breakdown.network to find a link. It comes out every morning and has the key AI stories that you need to know to start your day. Let me know which of these AI coding tools you are liking best in the comments or on our Discord. And until next time, peace.